Hi, Matt Dragon here for Precise RF. This video demonstrates the magnetic loop antenna, specifically the new Precise RF HG3 Stepper Tuned Mag Loop Antenna, MLA. This new MLA delivers unprecedented capability, performance, and convenience for a remotely tuned MLA. It employs a proven, accurate, and repeatable stepper motor design. Band selection, remote tuning, including optional loop rotation, is controlled by a microcontroller driving a high-resolution stepper motor. An integrated digital SWR bridge allows auto-tuning based on an SWR scan. This ensures compatibility with most radios. Manual tuning uses a convenient rotary encoder knob. No more finicky push buttons. The four-line LCD shows the band selected, SWR, ERP, cap value, and more. The bottom line, count on top-notch receiving and transmitting performance. Description An MLA is just an inductor formed by a wire loop with a circumference limited to less than 10% of the wavelength and a capacitor tuned to resonance. Electrically, it behaves as an inductor that inductively couples the radio wave, electromagnetic wave, magnetic field in the antenna's near region. In contrast, conventional monopole and dipole antennas couple to the radio wave's electric field. To work efficiently, losses must be minimized. Because of skin effect, the inductor forming the radiation loop L's surface area should be high. This decreases series resistive losses. The tuning capacitor C should have a low loss dielectric for low equivalent series resistance ESR. This LC circuit must be tuned to resonance at the desired frequency. At resonance, the MLA exhibits very high Q. As a result, it exhibits very narrow bandwidth and high voltage in the kilovolts across the capacitor. The MLA has its maximum signal gain in the plane of its radiation loop, with nulls broadside to the loop. Advantages It's convenient. It's a compact, lightweight, efficient antenna that's quickly deployable. It's ideal when an HOA restricts full-size wire antennas or where there's just not enough room to erect a conventional antenna. Many operators favor the MLA for field day and SOTA summit on the air operations. It's low noise. The MLA rejects locally generated noise due to its inherent magnetic field coupling and its relative insensitivity to the electric field. That's fortuitous. Most interference sources with radio frequency content directly radiate in the near electric fields. That's a big advantage for using an antenna that's insensitive to the main interference sources present in that frequency range. It's efficient. When designed and constructed properly, an MLA performs as well or even better than a dipole antenna. According to the American Radio Relay League, ARRL technical editor Jerry Hall, K1TD, in describing MLS gain, concluded, quote, In fact, it, the MLA, considerably exceeds the gain of a dipole when the MLA is mounted close to the ground. Drawbacks There are potential drawbacks. An MLA is not for every application and not for everyone. First, while desirable for selectivity and noise rejection, the narrow bandwidth can get in the way. Because of this narrow bandwidth, it must be retuned when making any significant frequency changes. This was especially annoying with first-generation tuning control methods. They lacked a clear indication of the tuning capacitor position, quick band switching, and convenient incremental tuning. So, it's not recommended for quick band scanning unless the MLA has addressed these shortcomings. Fortunately, the Precise RF HG3 MLA was designed to overcome some of these limitations. Capacitor high voltage is a potential drawback. This high voltage, ranging in kilovolts, is at high impedance and can't deliver much current. 
so any contact will load it and rapidly reduce the voltage. At higher power settings, the tuning capacitor can break down and cause arcing. For that reason, high power operation requires a special and more costly capacitor, such as a high voltage air dielectric butterfly or vacuum dielectric capacitor. Deploying the HG3 Stepper Mag Loop. Start with the mast and tuner and follow these steps. First, find a level surface clear of any obstructions within an approximate 15 foot radius. Use either the supplied tripod or your own. Extend your tripod to a convenient height. The MLA works well from 2 feet or higher above the ground. After approximately a 6 to 10 foot height, little performance is gained. Important, the antenna's radiator is at a high voltage level and emits a high RF field. Lastly, you must locate it at least 20 feet from the controller and people. The HG3 is available with either an optional aluminum or PVC mast. When properly guided, the aluminum mast is suitable for more permanent deployment. When using the aluminum mast, other than attaching the tuner and placing it on the tripod, no further mast assembly is required. The PVC mast comprises three sections. It's intended for portable use. It should never be left unattended. Assembly instructions. First, assemble the mast sections. It takes just slight pressure to fit the mast sections securely together. The tuner attaches to the lower section, which attaches to the center section. The center section attaches to the top section. The top section includes the induction loop. Finally, connect the supplied 50 ohm coaxial cable to the induction loop BNC connector. The HG3 controller supports a wide range of options. The initial offering includes the Express, Pro, and Lab option with the capability of additional options. A USB key determines which options are installed. The controller reads the USB key and automatically sets it to the correct version on startup. The Express version is the standard model and requires no USB key. It supports a high-resolution 2000 position stepper motor, manual tuning, and an external resonator. The Pro version requires the Pro USB key. It supports a high-resolution 2000 position stepper motor, manual tuning, external resonator, auto tuning, antenna rotation, and includes the integrated SWR bridge and ERP functions. The lab version requires the lab USB key. It is intended for advanced users wanting the controller in the lab for experimental use. It's available in a kit form requiring some technical assembly and soldering skills. It supports a NEMA 17 Ultra Resolution 8000 position stepper motor, manual tuning, external resonator, auto tuning, antenna rotation, and includes the integrated SWR bridge and ERP functions. The QRO version requires the QRO USB key. It's intended for users wanting higher power. It supports a NEMA 21 Ultra Resolution 8000 position stepper motor, manual tuning, external resonator, auto tuning, antenna rotation, and includes the integrated SWR bridge and ERP functions. The HG3 controller requires 9 to 12 volt power, 12 volt for the AE1 rotator. On the back are the antenna input, labeled ANT, the transmitter input, labeled XMTR input, the CAT6 tuner output, labeled TUNE, and the CAT6 rotator output, labeled rotator. On the left side is the USB input jack that sets the version. The front panel consists of an LCD, SWR bar graph, 
motor and fine LEDs, the tuning knob, and the four soft keys. During startup, the controller initializes and completes a system and option check. Note the sequence. Begin by inserting any required optional USB key. Next, turn the controller from off to on, required to read the option. The LCD opening screen shows the version and installed options. During startup, the capacitor indexes the 40 meter position, noted by the motor LED illuminating. The four row LCD indicates the following. The first row displays the band information. The second row displays the triangle-shaped cursor and the cap value in picofarads. The third row shows the auto-tuning status. The fourth row indicates four soft function keys, depending on the options installed, F1 through F4. The initial soft key choices are band, F1, auto, F2, Mode F3 and Help F4. The Band F1 key selects the band. Check it out. Press the Band F1 key. The choices now are Tune Down F1 in Frequency, indicated by the left arrow, and Tune Up F2 in Frequency, indicated by the right arrow. The OK F4 accepts the band selected and exits the band mode. Help is available with the Help F4 key. It supports most functions. Six Help pages cover most of the HG3 functions. Explore the Help pages by repeatedly pressing the previous F1 and or the next F2 keys. To exit Help, press Cancel F4. Configure the HG3 controller as follows. Note, the USB key is not required for express tuning. Connect the power supply. Then, connect the CAT6 cable, it's an ordinary Ethernet cable, from the controller's tune output to the tuner's CAT6 input. Finally, connect the 50 ohm coaxial cable from the antenna copper loop BNC to the radio's input-output. Use adapters if necessary to mate the BNC cable to the radio. You are now ready to tune the antenna. This method uses your radio and your ears. It gives you a close match quickly. Follow these steps. Turn the controller from the off position to on. This sets the correct option and initializes the controller. During initialization, the LCD displays the express mode and indexes the capacitor to the 40 meter band. Next, for this demo, set the controller to the 20 meter band. Then, set the radio to the 40 meter band. Tune it to approximately 7.5 MHz. Set the radio's modulation mode to SSB, short for single sideband, and increase the volume to hear some background static. If necessary, turn the radio's preamp on. Now, set the controller to the 40 meter band. You should notice an increase in the background noise from your radio. Lastly, using the tune knob, adjust it for the strongest background noise from the radio. The increase in background noise is a direct indication of the tuning match. Higher noise equals a better tuning match. You are now ready for a QSO. Checking the SWR, Express Model. First, make sure an SWR, Standing Wave Ratio Meter, is installed either inline or on the radio. This step requires an external SWR meter, which is not standard on the Express model. 
Then, transmit a low power carrier of about 2 to 5 watt. Now, using the controller's tune knob, adjust it for a low SWR value. This will take a little bit of practice. If needed, push the knob in to alternate between fine and coarse adjustment. In a little while, you'll get the hang of it. While a perfect SWR of 1.0 is often desired, it's not necessary. Any SWR lower than 2.0 will give you better than 88% ERP, equivalent radiated power. That equates to less than 0.1 dB loss. That minimal loss is virtually undetectable by the receiving station. You're now ready for a QSO. Listen. The Pro and Lab versions come with an integrated SWR bridge, so an external SWR meter is not needed. Configure the HG3 controller as follows. First, insert the Pro or Lab option required USB key. Then connect the power supply, followed by connecting the CAT6 cable. It's an ordinary Ethernet cable from the controller's tune output to the tuner's CAT6 input. Then connect the 50 ohm coaxial cable from the antenna copper loop BNC to the controller's ant. Finally, connect another 50 ohm coaxial cable from the radio's output input to the controller's transmitter input labeled XMTR. Use adapters if necessary to mate the BNC cable to the radio. You are now ready to tune the antenna. Auto tuning uses the HG3 integrated SWR bridge and bar graph display. The controller automatically scans for a low SWR at slightly below the tuned frequency. The capacitor turns incrementally in small steps while continuously updating the cap value SWR, ERP, and bar graph. Follow these steps. For this demo, we'll use the 20 meter band. Tune your radio to approximately 14.15 megahertz. Set the radio's modulation mode to single sideband and increase the volume to hear some background noise. If necessary, turn the radio's preamp on. Set the controller to the 20 meter band. Adjust the tune knob to obtain the strongest background noise from the radio. Press Auto, F2, or Auto Assist. The LCD prompts Connect Radio Transmit 1 to 3 Watt CW. Transmit a low power carrier of about 2 to 3 Watt and press OK. If the power is not correct, it prompts to adjust the power level accordingly. After finding an acceptable SWR, auto tuning ends. Note the 10 segment bar graph displays SWR from 1.0, indicated by 1 or no segment on, to a maximum of 10.0, with all segments on. Auto tuning usually takes only a few seconds. Occasionally, if the first scan is not successful, it automatically repeats the tuning cycle up to three times. If you are still not satisfied with the results, repeat auto-tuning by pressing the Auto F2 key. If the tuning is still not successful, use the manual tuning method. Unexpected tuning results can usually be traced to antenna deployment, local conditions, and occasionally antenna adjustments, as well as lack of understanding MLA operation. Check for the following. Begin by studying these instructions and check the PreciseRF.com website for the latest information.
The antenna is too close to the controller. It must be at least 20 feet from the controller. The antenna has been tested for reliable operation with a 50-foot feed line. Possible common mode current interfering with the controller or radio. Attach a common mode balloon to the antenna end. The CMB300 one-to-one common mode balloon is available from Precise RF. The antenna is too close to a metallic object. Move the antenna away from any metallic object. The copper induction loop is not correctly positioned. Reposition the induction loop up or down on the mast. A defective tuner, such as a short of the capacitor, the stepper motor, or driver circuit. Correct the defect and try again. By a defective coaxial cable or other bad connection. Replace the feed line and or correct the bad connection. The AR1 rotator rotates the HG3 MLA. Given that an MLA has the maximum signal in the plane of its radiation loop with nulls broadside to the wires, rotating the loop for best signal or least noise is desirable. Connect the CAT6 cable from the controller's output, labeled rotator, to the AR1 CAT6 input. Ensure you have the correct option installed. The Express model does not support the AR1 antenna rotator. Press the Mode F3 key repeatedly until rotator is displayed on the top LCD line. The bottom line presents four choices, CW, F1, for clockwise, and CCW, F2, for counterclockwise, and HELP, F4. Press either the CW, F1, for clockwise, or CCW, F2, for counterclockwise buttons to rotate the antenna. During rotation, the LCD indicates turning. Reverse direction once the rotation limits are reached. When the LCD displays, limit reached, reverse direction. Press the Mode F3 button repeatedly to exit and select the desired mode.